Evan Davis. Now, time rules our lives. Whether it's the race for the bus, the wait for a friend, the prison sentence, the class bell, or the delay in an NHS operation. But what about the longer term? Not 10 years, but 10,000 years. The Long Now is a group of people devoted to making long-term thinking automatic and common rather than difficult and rare. Their claim is that our civilization has an incredibly short attention span, measured by leaps in technology or the term of a government, and that prevents us from taking responsibility for the far future. To help us get a handle on this, the Long Now wants to construct a clock which ticks once a year, bongs once a century, and ejects a cuckoo every millennium. The prototype was completed in London's Science Museum today. Clock building and myth making doesn't come cheap. The Long Now Foundation has spent $750,000 on its prototype deep time clock so far. Why? An answer is found high up inside Big Ben, where the musician and artist Brian Eno has found inspiration in the 141-year-old mechanism. In this particular machine, what I see is uh, something that was built to last for a long time. So that it was built on the assumption that there was going to be a future. Um, we don't do that much anymore. We, we always act as if the future is going to end in about five years. Long-term thinking is in evidence everywhere here, even in the light bulbs which illuminate the clock face. 400 pounds each because they last 16 years. Most of our problems are to do with the with a shortage of long-term thinking. We, we don't plan very well. We start projects but then they um, they initially succeed and then they produce all kinds of spin-offs which we regard as unintended consequences. Uh, we've got to stop thinking in terms of unintended consequences and just think of consequences. Um, for instance, if we are building big dams or uh, changing social structures, so on and so on, we have to realize that those are complex issues and we have to be able to think about those. That means being able to think in deep time. Our sense of time is restless. Sir Isaac Newton in the 17th century believed time moved forward relentlessly in a straight line. Three centuries later, that was challenged by Albert Einstein, who proposed that time is relative. One person's now is actually another's then. The explosion of the atom bomb raised the possibility of the ultimate end of human time. Anti-nuclear scientists measured the time on the doomsday clock. Midnight meant annihilation. In 1983, the hands were moved to three minutes to 12. And all the time, the pace of technological change is speeding up. The number of components on a chip has increased 137 billion fold since 1959. Computer power doubles every 18 months. Intended as the ultimate antidote to short-termism, the tungsten pendulum of the long now clock ticks just once a minute. The rim counts the passage of years and centuries. The star field rotates once every 26,000 years. It isn't easy trying to build something to last that long. The way that a normal clock works, ticking once a second, really wouldn't work for 10,000 years because every one of those ticks is something banging and something else and clocks tend to tear themselves apart after about a century. So one of the tricks is you just make everything very slow. It's a world away from the frenetic pace of Mac One couriers in North London. With 150 drivers making 1,500 deliveries a day, thinking that slowly here would put you out of a job. Everything has to be done, it has to be done now. But unfortunately, you take that through to your private life as well. If you want something, you go out and you do it, and it's the same here. If you want something done, you go and do it. If somebody can't do it, you do it yourself. Because your time, you know, just is, it needs to be done right now. You've got no time. Deep time thinking is seeping into music, raising other questions about how a note and a thought is sustained over a really long time. Jem Finer has set up a listening post on the future at the East London Lighthouse, where Michael Faraday once experimented with optics. A computer plays different notes from a recording of Tibetan singing bowls. It's on a loop, 
that'll last a thousand years without repeating itself. If I could hear it all, I'd have to make it longer. It's easy to start something that's going to be long, especially on a computer, but to realistically think, um, how am I going to keep this going? You have to start thinking in entirely different ways. That whole thing of it extending way beyond my lifetime is what gives it the power of being able to dream a way into time for something very long, as which one's just a part. Well, I'm joined now by Stuart Brand, who's the founder of the Long Now Foundation, and by Sadie Plant. Among her many books, she's the author of The Zeros and Ones, The Digital Women in the New Technoculture. First of all, Sadie Plant, is the Long Now for you? Well, I certainly think, as we saw from the film, it, the project raises some very interesting ideas. Um, but I, I tend to think it doesn't really challenge our conceptions of time. You know, I think we are looking at extending our existing notions of time. And maybe there's room for problematizing that a little bit more. Well, this is some kind of, just a kind of linear approach to exactly. it. Exactly. It is the kind of thinking about time that we have had for certainly the last 2,000 years. And it seems, you know, perhaps we could be thinking even more adventurously than merely extending that thinking about time into the future. Stuart Brown, have other civilizations taken a long-term view? I suppose the classic one everyone refers to is Egypt with the uh, pyramids. Didn't they just take a long time to build? I mean, Only 50 years, actually. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that I think the Long Now Foundation is trying to raise the, the subject of, of. What would be interesting projects to take on that take 200 years or 2,000 years? Um, we make the assumption that nowadays, I think, that if a problem can't be solved in two or three years, it can't be solved. And that's terrible because those are actually the problems you would really want to solve. But isn't there a certain arrogance in saying that you know, we are at a, a critical point in our civilization now where we are in a position to keep for future generations a notion of what is right at this time? Mm -hmm. Well, keeping... I mean, it's your library that goes along with your clock, for example. Yeah, we're talking about a 10,000-year library as well as a 10,000-year clock. It's a much more complicated uh, thing to think about. The clock, in a way, is very straightforward. As you say, it's very linear. It's very thinkable. Um, the problem now with handling information is because of the accelerating technology, which has been sort of stated as the underlying premise of a lot of this, is that information becomes digital increasingly. Digital information, as they say now, lasts, five, lasts forever or five years, whichever comes first. And if you have a civilization which is putting all of its information in digital form, it's being erased every five or ten years, you basically have a civilization without a memory. But and probably then it also can't think ahead very well. But that, that's an incredible assumption to make that you know, we're at a position now where we are able to hand on more mm. knowledge to the future about the way it should be done. Yeah, I, th I think there is an underlying danger really with mm -hmm. thinking in this way, you know, that there is a, 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 an implicit and I'm sure quite unconscious mm. arrogance almost about this attempt to project so far ahead to think that to think that we do have something that we can deliberately choose to pass on. You know, I think the things that last in cultures, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are things which last because they do have some intrinsic value which cannot be planned for. You know, often it is very accidental. Mm -hmm. Things which perhaps were supposed to be short term that do last a long time and con likewise things that were supposed to last a long time that don't last at all. And presumably by the same token, the things that we think that are of value just now, Mm -hmm. We cannot know in any way if they're valuable in the future. I mean, for example, I mean, it, you know, if you look at the Romans, perhaps they thought it was valuable to throw Christians to the lions, but you, know, you wouldn't think now that that was something that you would want to have 2,000 years later. I think it's fair to say that uh, atmosphere, that a pretty stable climate, um, fairly regular weather, uh, enough water, are kinds of things you would want to have over centuries sure. and millennia. Well, of course, they suit us but, now. But yeah. surely now, more than at any time before, mm. we are in a position to influence life of the unborn just through genetic change, through GM, through modifications mm. in our ecosystems. Mm. We should make use of this if this is knowledge we have. Yeah. Oh, well, I think, you know, we, we probably are continually making use of it. And I'm sure that a project like this obviously does make a great contribution to that. But I, I tend to think it's in the... I, I think even though Brian Eno spoke against unintended consequences, I think it really history is a matter of unintended consequences. Oh, and yeah. We're but not now or at any other time. I think but, if you can to but, but do you actually want to take steps now? To say to, to make sure that things don't happen in the future? So you, no, I think Who makes those changes? I mean, for example, like, you know, 
clearing whole rainforests. I mean, Think, you, thinking ahead, I think, is different than planning ahead. Mm -hmm. Planning ahead is saying we know what's right for the future, the long-term future. We'll, we'll have a thousand-year Reich. There won't be another mm -hmm. revolution in Germany for a thousand years, Hitler said. And we burn the old books because we don't need that information. And that keeps happening in history. And if you have a little more respect for the past and a little more respect for the future, which assumes that they'll figure out what they want to do. But what you don't want to do is take away their options. And humanity's at the stage now where we can take away options, and often are. We are reducing biodiversity enormously. We're, but, but, we're taking away all the fishes. All the cod are gone from the North so, Atlantic. So it's, it's a good thing gone. to reduce options in the future if people think now that they're bad options for the future. <laughs> well, I think, you know, especially talking about, you know, periods of thousands of years, you know, who knows? I mean, we don't know what kind of species mm -hmm. we're anticipating. And especially, I think, we don't know what kind of conceptions of time we might be anticipating. Well, we'll wait to see at least the clock will be some kind of icon. Of the Science Museum. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.